I want to go on to fat loss, uh -huh. getting ripped, getting in good shape. <laughs> there's a bunch of things. We talked a little bit about fat burners, which I want to pick up again. Yeah. And, and there's also now the the new drug, which I'm I'm sure you know about, which is the semaglutide oh, yeah. version. Right. What what what's your Let's start with semaglutide. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Okay, it really works. <laughs> but let's look at how it works. Now, first of all, I have to say on the onset, semiglutide, semiglutide, uh, let me call it Ozemp Ozempic. Uh, yeah. I had a little a trouble pronouncing semaglutide. <laughs> <laughs> Ozempic, and there's a couple others, Wegavo, we, 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 we something like that. I don't know where they come up with these names, but anyway, the point is that it definitely causes weight loss, and almost everybody uses it. What's the mechanism? It's what they call a, a glucagon-like peptide 1 agonist. Glucagon, <laughs> let's call it GLP-1. GLP-1 is produced in the body, in the gut. Uh, it's what's called an incretin hormone, meaning it promotes the release of, of insulin, which is why... These drugs were originally diabetes and still are mm. used mainly to treat diabetes. That, yeah, yeah. They're not, they weren't meant for weight loss. As a side effect, people who were taking the drugs to, let's say, control their diabetes started to lose 20, 30 pounds. And, you know, the drug companies, you know, they always see the dollar <laughs> sign. You know, obesity is a billion dollar business. If you can come out with a drug that really. A pill. Yeah, a pill. I'm sorry, a pill <laughs> that causes weight loss. You got a gigantic market. Yeah. I'm talking huge, and the light bulb went up and said, "Hey, we're going to remarket this stuff as a a weight uh, loss or uh, aid." But the essential point to remember is that these GLP-1 agonists do not burn fat. All they do is impart a feeling of fullness. They make you feel full, so you don't want to eat more. So you automatically reduce calories. See, mm -hmm. and, and they also, and they do reduce hunger too, along with the feeling of fullness. Those two factors, feeling of fullness and reduction of hunger, that's what causes the, mm -hmm. the weight loss. Great. Uh, it does have a, 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 whole, a whole full page of side effects. Right. You know, it does come with side effects. There's no drug. A, a pharmacologist- I looked, heard it is, I got a friend who was a big investor in it and said it was this miracle drug with very little side effects, but- um, Well, yeah, but it's still, it, you know, it, it, let me put it this way. A pharmacologist will tell you a drug without side effects <laughs> is a drug that doesn't work. <laughs> Every drug has side effects. Now, it's true that they're rare. You know, it's okay. true. However, an essential, there's two essential points that I don't think are being emphasized enough about this. Because Weight Watchers have now partnered up. Oh, everybody's there. on it. You know, yeah. there's three things. That I, I said two, I'm going to add another one. There's three things people have to be cognizant about. When it, uh, by the way, if you know what cognizant means, take out your dictionary. <laughs> it means being aware. Of. <laughs> no, the thing is, they, they have to be aware of with these, with these GLP agonist drugs is first of all, they, you have to take them all the time. As soon as you get off them, you know, it's like the, it's like the coach in Cinderella. Remember at midnight, yeah. they turned back into a pumpkin? Guess what? <laughs> when you get off GLP agonists, your appetite comes right back. Oh. So you can put the weight right back on. Second well, it's, a, it's a perfect business model, I guess, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Second point. <laughs> Second point is the cost. Yeah, it's very expensive. I mean, it's like anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 a month. Mm. A month. And it's not covered by most insurance. It's going to be out of your pocket. And if you want to keep the weight, if you're going to have to take it for life, that's a big investment of money, right? Mm -hmm. That's the second problem, right? Uh, if you're a, di a full-blown diabetic... You could, you could probably get a prescription from an, obviously from a physician. How much insurance will pay, I don't know. But it'll still be, I, I, I know that I, I don't take that drug, but certain asthma drugs I take, I know that these are, so there's one I take that co normally costs $1,300 a month. It only lasts me a month. But because of my insurance, it costs me something like $250. It's still pretty expensive. Mm. So you can bet that even if you have a prescription for these GLP, when I, they're still not going to be cheap, right? Here's the third and probably most important thing to remember about GLP-1 agonists. 40% of the weight loss of people, this is what the studies show, this is going to be shocking to a lot of people. 40% <laughs> of that weight loss is muscle. 40%. Wow. Yes. So is that is is it happening like you said with like long term fasting? Is that the sort of thing that's going on? What's going on is 
with the reduction of calorie, when you eat less, you're you're also reducing a lot of essential nutrients, including protein. Right. Your protein can go down like 50, 60, 70 percent. When that happens, there's going to be muscle loss. See, and you say to me, okay, the, the obvious question is, is there anything people can do about that? It, can they take these GLP-1 agonists and maintain, you prevent that lemur? Yes. F very simple answer. Two words. Resistance exercise. <laughs> yeah. Resistance exercise. <laughs> if, you know, they've shown in many, many studies, hundreds, when you diet, when you go on it, whether it's a low-carb diet, a calorie-restricted diet, if you want to maintain lean mass, you you have to do two things. You got to increase your protein, and you got to engage in resistant exercise. Essential, essential to maintain lean mass. The same with these drugs. If you want to maintain, I'm sorry, if you want to prevent that lean, that 40% loss of lean mass, you better hit the gym or, or get weights. Do something. If you want to use cables? Do some sort of resistant exercise, or you're going to lose that muscle. And when you lose your muscle, you know your resting metabolism goes down. So if and when you right. do get off the drugs, you're gonna you're gonna blow up like a balloon real fast. <laughs> so people have to understand if you're gonna take these GLP uh, and you know everybody's rushing to get it. Elon Musk took it. He says he lost thirty. You know all these people, you know, the movie stars are all getting on this stuff. Yeah. You know if you want to take it, fine. And yes, I agree. If you if you take it's only like two point four milligrams. You're not the odds of side effects. Even though there's a long list of possible. It's it's not it's not likely very mm. like unlikely. However, uh, you better do resistance exercise, or like I said, you're going to lose a lot of muscle, and that's not good. People have to know that, and the, and this is not this is not being told to people, and in, in in the in the uh, in the in the zeal to take these GLP. Oh, I want to take it. I want to lose a. Oh, I I can't diet. I I've tried everything, and I, I need you know blah blah blah. Yeah, you know, they they they're not being told about the muscle loss. They need to know this. This is essential. They really need to know this. You got to do. I'm sorry. If you if you don't want to do resistance training, don't take it. Don't take the drug. It's that's. Yeah, I'm telling you, don't take it. And you better also increase your protein. The side effects, and probably even if you do continue to take it, like that loss of muscle mass over the long period, is probably going to very a bad. Lot of yeah. yeah. Not only, but like I say, you know, I assume that most people take these drugs because they want to, you know, lose body fat. And you know, if you if you take them without resistant training and your metabolism drops and you don't take enough protein, you're gonna lose the muscle, your rest of the metabolism is gonna go into nothing. So again, unless you wanna, you know, if you wanna take these drugs for life, <clears throat> you know, and you can afford to, okay. But then again, what's that doing? You know, all that muscle loss, what's that gonna to do to your health? Mm. Remember I told you that muscle loss is related to increased mortality? I mean, nobody knows because this, you have to understand, this is a new thing. <clears throat> nobody knows the long term effects of these GLP 1A. That's another thing. They don't know the long. You, no, nobody's taking this stuff new. for 10, 15 years. <laughs> What's going to happen? Let's say somebody is wealthy enough or is motivated enough, whatever, to stay on this stuff. You know, let's say they've heard that if you get off it, you gain the weight. But okay, that's great. I'm not getting off it. They stay on it 10, 15 years. What's going to happen? Nobody knows. No doctor can tell you that. Mm. Nobody knows. My guess is if they don't engage in resistance training and they don't increase their protein. Now, if you can't eat the protein, because really, this stuff really does knock out your appetite. I mean, people almost have to force themselves to eat on this stuff. That's how powerful it is. I mean, you better at least take a protein supplement. Even if you never take protein, you better take a protein to, uh, you know, and, and engage. You got to do those two things or you're going to be in big trouble. I almost guarantee it. That's mm. my prediction. DNP. Uh -huh. Oh, my God, DNP. Dinitrophenol, uh, dinitrophenol, I think it's called. Uh, two, two, uh, uh, two dinitrophenol. I'm trying to remember the exact. Okay. This is probably, I've called it in my videos, the worst, the most dangerous drug in bodybuilding. The, the, more dangerous than any steroid, any speed, anything. Because uh, uh, just taking a little bit more than the, let's say, safe dosage kills you. You literally burn up from the you, you get because it's a fat, it's a weight weight loss fat loss. It's a, oh, it's drug. it's uh, it works, just like the GLP one agonist. This stuff works. If you th this is one of those things that remember I said earlier that about these people will take a fat burning drug and sit there and not do anything expect that to burn fat. Yeah. 
this stuff, you can sit there <laughs> and not do anything. And you will burn fat. You can burn a quarter of a pound of fat a day sitting on your behind if you take this stuff. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. But but if you take one drop too much, you, you, your body basically, you, you cook from the inside. It raises your metabolism 50% higher than any thyroid drug. And this stuff, it's an interesting history. I got to tell you, it's really interesting. Uh, how did uh, DNP, uh, I'm sorry, <clears throat> DNP came about because French munition workers during World War I, DNP was used in the manufacture of dynamite. <clears throat> and in these munition factories, the DNP got in the air, dust. The, 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 um, the, the munition workers, factory workers, they were noticing two things. They, their skin was turning yellow and they were losing a lot of body weight. They were losing a lot of body fat. <clears throat> so eventually, this caught the attention of a couple of doctors, and they isolated to the DNP from the dynamite manufacturer. So in the 20s, they, they decided to, to remanufacture it into a weight loss drug. DNP has the, uh, has the distinction of being the very first weight loss drug in the 1920s. And even worse... It was sold over the counter. You could go in a drugstore, buy it right off the counter. It had about 50 different trade names. But around the early 1930s, uh, much of, but for some reason, it affected women more than women, young women who were using it started getting cataracts. <clears throat> you know, and I mean, a lot of young, young women, they're getting cataracts. And it was from the DNP. So what the government, had, government had no protective agency to monitor over-the-counter drug, nothing, you know. <clears throat> the government, to counter that, set up a brand new agency because of DNP. Today we call it the Food and Drug <laughs> Administration. The, the very government agency that monitors all drugs was started because of DNP. And they passed a certain law, a Food Something Act, and it established the, uh, the uh, Food and Drug Administration. But DNP then disappeared into, uh, you know, disappeared for a while, for, you know, for years. <clears throat> and then it turned out there was uh, a doctor who, uh, who was, uh, had a weight loss clinic down, in, uh, you know, who knew about DNP. <clears throat> he had a, what he called a bariatric clinic. He was treating people who wanted to lose weight. Today, these clinics would probably give out GMP when ag, but this is in the <laughs> 80s. So he, he started giving his patients... DNP, and again, most of them were women. I don't know if he got a lot of cash. He claimed that he treated thousands of patients, but apparently uh, there were some medical problems. Uh, and uh, you know, he was warned not to do it, but he was making so much money, he kind of ignored it. By then, he had a whole chain of clinics. He's making a fortune because it worked. You know, the, you know, the word is spread. Hey, go to this doctor, man. It really, you're going to lose the fat. It really works. I don't know what he's. I don't know what he's giving you. He, he gave it a different name. He gave it his little trade name. But what happened was, uh, you know, a couple of people were getting sick, so the uh, FDA closed them down, and he went to prison, lost his license. <clears throat> While he was in prison, he was in a cell with a guy named Dan Duchesne. I don't know if you heard about it. Dan Duchesne uh, wrote a book called The Underground Steroid Handbook in the early oh, right, 80s, yeah. which was the first book which described how to use anabolic steroids for bodybuilding purposes. He was called the steroid guru, which is uh, what they called him. He was in uh, jail with uh, this doctor, <clears throat> and the doctor told him about DNP. So D Duchesne came out, and he got together with a couple of other guys, and they decided they, they, they repackaged uh, DNP and started giving it to bodybuilders, a couple of pro bodybuilders. Sure enough, the pro bodybuilders used it and lost body fat, and they gave him specific instructions. Don't take any aspirin with it, and uh, you know, don't do this, don't do that. They told him what not to do. Don't, you know, this, and, uh, but what happened was um, <clears throat> the, um, Duchesne went to jail for another reason. Uh, I think it was either Clenbuterol or GHP, I don't remember. He went back to jail. And, uh, uh, you know, this stuff again kind of disappeared for a while. Then it came back a couple of years later, and it's still in use today by many pro bodybuilders, including one body. I don't want to embarrass him by mentioning his name, but you interviewed this guy. He was a top Mr. Olympia. He, he is very open about talking about his drug regime, but he never mentions this stuff. But how do I know he took it? Because another pro bodybuilder called me on the phone one day and said, listen, 
uh, blank, blank, told me how he gets shredded the last two weeks before a show. He's, it's DNP. What do you know about this, Jerry? I said, well, this is another top five bodybuilder, a uh, competitor of, of Mr. X, let's call him. Uh, I said, let me tell you, this stuff, if you want to try it, don't take it before a contest because it's unpredictable. I said, when you take it, it makes you feel like you have the worst flu you'll ever had in your life. It takes, it, 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 so you have to understand, remember I talked about ATP being the elemental source of energy? DNP works by inhibiting a process in the mitochondria, that's where energy is produced in the cell, uh, it inhibits a process called oxidative phosphorylation, which produces AMP. DNP is like throwing a monkey wrench in the, in the, in the production of AMP, ATP. So what, the body needs energy, so if it can't get ATP, it's going to go to the next readily available body fat. Mm. That's how it burns body fat. Unfortunately, in doing so, like I say, it causes this increase in internal body uh, heat, where if you, again, if you take a little bit, there was a doctor right around that time in the 20s when they were experimenting with DMP. This doctor in San Francisco, did, he, he didn't want to experiment with different dosage. He used a lower dosage, he, lose, he lost body fat. So what he did is he decided to opt the dosage. So he went into a hotel room and he knew about the, the uh, body temperature changes. He sat in a, uh, a, a cold bathtub where he put ice in <laughs> to prevent the excess right, and he took an extra dose of DNP. They found his body about two days later, still in the bathtub, and when they did the autopsy, his internal organs were barbecued. They were cooked from the inside. Wow. Yeah, that's what happens when you take DNP. So what happened was, in the last couple of years, DNP showed up on the internet. It's being sold over the internet as a weight loss agent, wow. and about 50 people have died. And these are not bodybuilders. Around. These are young women, young men, who or their only interest is in losing body fat. And they followed the directions. Now, you say to me, wait a minute, if they followed the dosing directions, why did they die? And this is where people have attacked me for what I'm about to say, because I mentioned this in my articles and videos. DMP has a, is a funny situation. Some people have a genetic quirk where instead of being metabolized, the DMP dose stays longer in your body. So if you take it day after day, you, it builds up cumulative by the third or fourth day, you've now reached a toxic dose and you die. Mm. That's what killed these people. That's the real danger of DNP. You don't know if you're one of those people. There was a famous basketball player years ago, Len something, I can't remember. He went to a party and they were doing cocaine. He took, you know, just snorted this. He didn't know that he lacked the enzyme that breaks down cocaine. He, genetic mutation, he lacked the enzyme. In two hours, he died. This is a freak of, this is a, you know, kind of an outlier situation. You don't know whether you're one of those people that doesn't break down a DNP. It can kill you. I, that's why I still maintain it's horribly dangerous. And I always tell people, you know, I didn't use steroids when I was a competitive bodybuilder. I didn't use any drugs. But I, I you know, I didn't know as much about steroids then as I do today. <laughs> but I tell people that, uh, you know, when, in, in relation to DNP, I probably admit that if I knew back then what, what I know today about steroids, yes, I probably would have taken steroids. I admit it. But when it comes to DNP, no way. I'd never, I would not put my life on the line. No chance. Mm -hmm. And yes, it really does work. But it's super dangerous. Super dangerous. I wouldn't recommend that to my worst enemy, that stuff. <laughs>